All right, Codebreakers, we're back again with another video guide to the NSA Codebreaker Challenge. Uh, this one will be looking at task 6A, message spoofing. So in this, they give you the little bit of background information. The briefing says that it describes the archive structure that we discussed in task 5 video. And we want to look for a vulnerability that will allow us to send and receive messages as a terror time user without them seeing access or without them seeing it the next time they access their account. So we want to be able to send a message ourselves, but we want someone to the person who uh, whose account we're spoofing to not be able to read that message when they log in in the future. Now, one of the things that we're going to recall is that in the previous video, I was discussing the key wrapping scheme and how the public keys of all of the users are included in that message whenever it's sent. And first the message is encrypted with a small key and then that small key is encrypted using the public keys of all the message recipients. So that sort of means that any one of the message recipients is able to go back and decrypt the original message either way. So it means they can recover that message from the archives and decrypt it themselves, even if it was a message that was being sent originally to another user. So that sort of facilitates that two-way communication and archiving. Now, one of the things that we're going to look at here is we'll go ahead and log back into the Spark client that we used in task five. And you may recall that Logan was the organization leader and we created a new password using the token script that I had created here using one of our test accounts and that's valid for one hour. So we'll go ahead and click log in. And if we look at our debugger here, we can sort of see what's happening in the background here. And we can look at some of these requests that are being received we see our service discovery information about everyone, if they're logged in or not. We'll go ahead and click on someone. And when we click on them, it's going to get information about them, their chat state. And this is what I was looking for here. Now, one of the features that we saw on our feature list before was the vCard temp feature. And what that is, is basically a contact card for each user. And you'll see here that inside that contact card is the public key for our Logan user, our organization leader. So if we know that they're using the key wrapping scheme where this public key is being retrieved from the server every time that someone sends a message to this user, and then the message is being encrypted with this public key, then replacing this public key will mean that we're able to send a message signed with that key that the recipient will receive and be able to decrypt because the message is gonna be signed with their public key as well. However, when Logan logs back in, he won't be able to see that message because it was signed with a public key that he doesn't have the private key to. So what we need to do here is look at updating his V card. Now it's very important with all these V cards, uh, any of the NSA staff will tell you if you talk to the support people, is that it's very important to back these up because if you accidentally lose this original public key, then you are completely out of luck and they will have to restore your server for you. So let's go ahead and save these. We'll start making a list here. So if you look at the vCard temp reference sheet here, you can see some information about retrieving a vCard, the example of a response and we can see about updating the vCard and really it's just as simple as changing the type to set and then changing the content that we want here. So what we want to do actually is go ahead and generate a new RSA 2048 public key 
and you can use whatever utility you prefer to do that. Now just to make it easy to handle all this so I don't have to do a bunch of different OpenSSL commands, we can just use a simple online generator like this. So let's go into our key here, our original public key from our user, and we can go ahead and change this type to set. And then we'll cut and paste this new public key into it. And so now we've replaced his public key with our own public key. And we'll go ahead and remove these details because we don't really need the to and from. So now we've constructed our query to go ahead and update the vCard for this user. So let's go ahead and go into our Spark client. Click send packets. Paste in our message here. Click send. And now if we scroll down here, we'll see a result. And it basically just gives a response, an empty re result response, meaning that it was successful. So now we can verify that by going to our vcard temp reference, and we can just go ahead and cut and paste this example here to get our own vcard. We don't have to have this from, and it'll just get the current logged in user. We'll go ahead and click send. And again, we can see our response, but now we see that the vcard content here for Logan matches the public key that we just inserted, our own public key. So now Logan's vcard contains a public key that he does not have the private key to. So any messages that are sent to, the, to him right now, he will be unable to decrypt. However, we do have the public key to that message and private key. So we are able to decrypt it. So if we go ahead and pull up our SQLite database browser, and then we go ahead and open up the client DB, we can browse our data here. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we wanna log in as our terror leader. So we'll go ahead and change this X name field like we did in task four. We'll change it to Logan instead of our arrested terrorist from task three. So now we know we're gonna be logging in as Logan. The other thing that we can do here is now we can go ahead and put in our own public key. So now we have our public key for our new user that we've created. We've inserted it into the database here. We'll go ahead and save and close out of this. Now in Android Studio, we can go ahead and upload our new database. So now we can go ahead and pull up the Terra Time app and we want to log in as our terrorist from task three because that's the username we have saved in that database. So go ahead and click log in. Now we're authenticating as this user Kali, but the X name for the chat server in the database is going to go to Logan, the organization leader. Now at this point, we know that Liam is the cell leader, so they're the person we need to send a message to. So let's go ahead and just send a message and we'll say, hey loser. and we'll send that message to Liam. So now back in the Spark client, we're able to pull up Logan's account here, and we'll go and say we're going to send some packets. If you recall from the previous video, we need to go ahead and look at the message archive management, and we need to get the message archives for this particular user. So we'll go ahead and copy this request into the Spark client, and go ahead and click send. If we go over to our debugger here, we can see all of our messages that we received from the archives. And if we look at the raw packets here, we can actually see the message that we sent. 
So we can see that there was a message sent here from Logan to Liam, and that's the message that we need to submit here. And that will just be our very last message. So we'll go ahead and copy that. We can post our spoofed message that we sent to Liam. And then we just need to put in Liam's username. And we'll go ahead and click Submit. And now we've completed task 6A.